It was the 38th meeting all time between James Madison and William and & Mary, and like four of the last five, well, it came down to a one-score game. And this time, William & Mary prevails 44-41 was the final. Hello everyone, welcome into the Coach Everett Withers Show. I'm Kurt Dudley with the Dukes head football coach, Everett Withers. And Coach, back-to-back uh, -back losses for the Dukes. We go back right. to the Richmond game and you were disappointed with the way the Dukes played in that game. Right. More so than the loss, but if you measure it this week between the Dukes and the Tribe, how would you evaluate it? Well, Kurt, I thought we played with a tremendous effort. Uh, you know, obviously going on the road, playing a talented team. Uh, first game starting a, a new quarterback. I thought our kids did a great job on the, on the really on the business trip up to Williamsburg. I thought they did a great job and in preparation for the game and, and throughout the game. We didn't play particularly well on defense, but we played hard. And uh, to me, that was kind of the, the measuring stick for us going into the ball game. Of course, a lot of fans concerned when you lose the caliber of a quarterback like you do in Vadley or that type of player, right. you know, how that's going to affect your team. Last week, on your shows, you were saying you had a lot of confidence in Brian Shore, particularly with his acumen for the game of football. Uh, did he uh, prove that your faith in him was uh, was valid? Yeah, I thought Brian did a great job. I mean, I, you know, again, uh, if you look at the numbers, you know, we, we score 41 points with a, with our second string quarterback. Uh, usually you win those games when you do that. I mean, he was very efficient with the ball. Uh, you know, so you know, I thought he did a great job. He had maybe two or three throws that weren't you know, what we wanted, won the interception, obviously. But uh, for the most part, he ran the offense efficiently. We didn't miss a beat as far as tempo. Uh, he got us in the right plays. I thought he did a great job. And again, it's uh, his knowledge of the offense helped him to look very calm. In the previous game, he looked a little deliberate coming out there at times. Sure. I didn't see that in him at all this week. He seemed to be really in, co in control. And even when he was flushed out of the pocket, sure. he knew where to go with the football on most occasions. Well, you know, a week being the guy, uh, kind of helps you that way. Uh, even though you may be splitting time and getting reps as the two, when you're the guy that's getting all the particulars, mm -hmm. uh, I think it helps you be that guy uh, on game day. You talk oftentimes about uh, taking what the defense is going to give you. You take the opening snap, the opening drive, rather. Right. Uh, you drive down. It wasn't a typical jam you drive. It was 79 yards, 16 plays, right. and took a bit, about five minutes. What was William & Mary yielding you uh, in that particular drive that you get in and score? Right. Well, they gave us a lot of the perimeter uh, throws, what we call the relief game. So they gave us that a lot uh, early. Uh, so we were able to take advantage of that. And then we were able to hit some runs, a lot of the Q runs. Uh, early. Uh, so again, it's a mixture. We get a different kind of game plan each week from different teams. Uh, and it takes really those first one or two drives to kind of figure out what people want to settle into. And, uh, and then we, we kind of mold our game plan around that. All right, so what, William & Mary quarterback Steve Cluley, this is a young man who has been playing very well this year. He had gone 176 passes right. without throwing an interception, but yet Raven Green comes up with a big pick, right. helps you go up in front 13-2 to two at that time. What, uh, what allowed you to come up with that pick? I know you've been practicing against what they were doing as far as their receivers. Well, they're a horizontal passing team. They're not a deep down the field throw team. They're more of a horizontal throw the out cuts versus single coverage, but try to mesh you across the middle. And, uh, you know, we had, a, we had a good scheme put together on, uh, on the down and distance that he threw the ball, and Raven was in the right spot, intercepted the ball, and took it for a touchdown. Yeah, for Raven, his second career interception, right. first in which he has uh, taken back for the score. Now, Coach, one, one blocked extra point, you can kind of say that's an aberration, sure. but when you have three in a game, it's such mm -hmm. a rarity. Obviously, something was breaking down there. Can yep. you share with us what happened? Well, we just had one individual on our, on our uh, PAT field goal that just didn't get his job done, and they, they have really schemed and attacked that one area. And uh, two of the times were, were just, you know, one guy not doing his job. The, the third time was more of uh, really illegal, uh, what they were doing, uh, really kind of coming over our center. You're not supposed to touch the center uh, until he gets his head up uh, after he snaps it, and, and they were really all over our center. They called it later on. They just didn't call it in the first half. Now, on the one block, uh, they get penalized. It looked right. like they were going to return it for another uh, defensive two. They get penalized. You come back, you get the ball again, but right. there you elect, you were setting up for the extra point. Sure. You elected to go for two. What changed in your mind? Moving it closer, uh, why did you go for two then? Mo moving it closer and we needed the two. And uh, so it was an opportunity to us for go, you know, to go to that situation. Mm -hmm. uh, they moved the ball up, so you know, we felt like we were in a better position to go get the two points. You and I haven't talked philosophically about mm -hmm. uh, when you get behind because you miss an extra sure. point. Sure. You know, some will say, in fact, I was saying during the radio broadcast, no, I don't think they're going to chase that point right now. Right. Right. But you, you went ahead. What is the philosophy with your offense about two versus the one? 
Well, in this case, it was more that the fact that they moved the ball up and the fact that we were on the road. I felt like we needed to get that momentum back and get that point back when we were on the road. So uh, more than anything else, it, it, a lot to do about where the ball is positioned. Uh, and it also gives us the opportunity if we're on the road to gain some momentum on the road. You expressed in the Richmond game that in the second quarters where you felt like you were having a hard time stopping mm -hmm. the run. Did you get that same feeling against William and Mary? No, I didn't. I, you know, I felt there were times that we did a really good job of stopping the run. I thought we did a really good job on some of the off-schedule uh, reverses and some of the, 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 the trick plays. I thought we did a really good job there. So uh, there wasn't a time in the game that I felt like we couldn't go get them stopped. We just, you know, obviously a real good football team, and they executed very well. Yeah, they did. They certainly did, Coach. Uh, trading third quarter punts, and then you forced the Tribe to go for a long field goal. Right. They missed that. I felt pretty good about things at that particular juncture. But uh, then the Dukes, well, they go up a, a two-score lead, 34-23 right. to a 23 at that time. But then three straight drives for touchdowns for the Tribe. Right. What, what happened there? Well, they did a good job of executing. You know, it's bottom line. They, they're a very good football team. I, I, I said it early in the week. I think they are one of the two best teams in our league. And, uh, and defensively, we play a lot of young guys on defense, and, and we just couldn't get them stopped. Uh, you held the lead uh, for all but three minutes in the game. Right. The Tribe first lead, 37-34, midway through the fourth quarter, following a short interception. But then you respond very quickly, 2-12. Right. Again, there's some conversation. Uh, do you score too quickly? I mean, what do you right. think about that? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, there, there, there's always conversation on that, uh, you know, with, with our offense anyway, because we have the potential to score really fast. Mm -hmm. uh, we felt like, you know, get the touchdown. We wanted to have the points, and then we wanted to say, hey, go stop them defense. We just didn't get them stopped. Yeah, you did respond again with the 10-play, 75-yard mm -hmm. drive, just took the 212. Timing is also everything, and sometimes when an event happens, it stands out more because of when it actually sure. happens. The bad snap right. on the last try, I know you want to have at least a shot, sure. and you probably could have had about three shots to right. maybe get it into the end zone. Right, yeah, we just, you know, it was an opportunity where we just didn't execute the snap. Uh, very simple, you know, quarterback exchange with the, with the center. We just didn't get it done. So, uh, again, you're learning moments, teaching moments, you hopefully you get an opportunity to, to write that down the road somewhere. Dukes have been trimming down the penalties a little bit, but mm -hmm. uh, penalties came back to bite you a little bit this yep. week, too. In fact, it resulted in, I think, three first downs right. for William & Mary. Those those probably stand out as maybe some of the biggest plays in the game because yep. it extended William & Mary's opportunities. No question. Uh, I think three of them were either holding or personal or uh, pass interference penalties, uh, which extended drives, which allowed them to keep the ball longer. Uh, again, uh, you know, I, I, some of them I think are – or, or calls I'm not sure should have been made. Okay. Um, so again, it's one of those situations where you know it, it's it's part of the game. Uh, you hope when you play those type of games that there aren't outside factors that that uh, have a have a piece in the game. You also told me though that you slept pretty good uh, over the yep. weekend because when you looked at your personnel, right. despite the loss, you've got a lot of youngsters in there, and that uh, the future of JMU football, despite losing a couple of games, right. don't get too bleak. <laughs> right. We still got more games to play. Well, you know, you look at this stretch that we've gone through, this six-game stretch, and we're four and two in that six-game stretch. You go to SMU, Stony Brook, Towson, uh, Elon, uh, Richmond, William and & Mary, and you start looking at that, and, and to be honest with you, uh, if somebody would have told me that at the beginning of the season that we'd be four and two coming out of that stretch, I'd take it and uh, I'd be happy with it uh, going into the bye week, having a bye week so late. So, uh, and I look at our roster, and I, I, today I was in both staff rooms, uh, and you start talking about we played seven sophomores, all right, and, uh, and we, then we play three juniors and one senior on defense, and really only three seniors on offense. So uh, I started thinking about, you know, you, Things are, things are going to be okay in JMU history. One of those fellows that will return, and who I thought played really good, although he doesn't stand out numbers-wise, but if you watch him, you isolate him on the day. Mm -hmm. Ishmael Hyman, yep. one of the receivers, played a really physical game, about as physical as you possibly can be without having the football in your hands. Right. Uh, the last couple of weeks, uh, Ish has really done an unbelievable job of blocking on the perimeter. Uh, he's on our kickoff team. Uh, he runs down. He's, he's nearly the first guy down every time. 
Uh, and he's one of our backside guys. He does an unbelievable job, and he's wanting, he's eager to be that guy, not just be a guy that catches passes, but do all the fringe stuff that you want really good players to do. And uh, I've been really proud of the way he's been the last few weeks. Well, Carden Johnson certainly did carry a load for you this past week. Not right. only was he carrying the football for his third 100-yard rushing game, yeah. you also put him back in the absence of Charles Tutt sure. to return some kicks as well, as well as John Miller to return yeah. some yeah. kicks. No question. Carden's done a good job of that. And, you know, after some of the issues, that he had a week ago to get him back there and kind of get it going again. I think he can be a dynamic kickoff returner. When you you really want that kind of body type to be a returner, a bigger guy that can go take, you know, bounce off one tackle and go hit a seam. And, and Carden did that a couple of times. So uh, uh, we want to continue to do that with him. All right, Coach, thanks for that little insight. The Dukes, they do fall to the tribe of William & Mary, 44-41, to 41, now 7-2 and two overall and 4-2 and two in the Colonial Athletic Association. We'll come back with a little chalk talk with a couple of the assistant coaches for the Dukes after this timeout on the Coach Everett Withers Show. Harrisonburg Nissan's factory authorized year-end clearance sale is going on now. Harrisonburg Nissan has all in stock 2015 Nissans priced at or below factory invoice. And you keep a rebate. 0% financing on Nissan Altima, Rogue, Sentra. All invoices clearly posted. Savings up to and over $8,000. We're clearing out the 15s to make room for the 16s. Now's the best time to buy. Harrisonburg Nissan's factory authorized year-end clearance sale. Going on now. Check us out 24-7. HarrisonburgNissan.com. Products we buy right so you can too. That's right. At Office Products, we do things right. With our multi-million dollar inventory of new, used, and refurbished furniture, you're sure to find exactly what you're looking for. From desks to chairs, filing cabinets, and so much more. All the major brands that you're looking for. Office Products, we buy right so you can too. Office Products, we do things right. Clear to zip. Break a little. Good job. Good job. Game on. Welcome to Valley Building Supply of Harrisonburg, formerly known as Valley Blocks. We've combined with the Valley Building Supply chain to offer a wider range of products and services to our customers. Visit our newly remodeled showroom to see the latest from Anderson. We also carry interior and exterior doors in a variety of styles and finishes, and custom hardwood flooring and moldings. We are your Shenandoah Valley masonry experts. Our expanded inventory now includes more tools and builder's hardware than ever before. Let Valley Building Supply show you how to create the home of your dreams from foundation to finish. JMU Nation, how you doing? This is Steve Cease, the defensive coordinator for your JMU Dukes. I uh, just want to talk to you a little bit uh, today about uh, our game last uh, Saturday against William and Mary. I want to show you Raven Green's uh, touchdown uh, interception uh, and just talk to you a little bit about what our plan was uh, schematically uh, for one of the main routes that they, uh, that they ran on third down. So if you guys will take a look at the screen, uh, what you'll see is this is a third and about six or seven yards. And one of their top concepts, and you'll see the wide receiver come in motion. If you watch the screen, you'll see the route happen. They run a shallow crosser uh, to number 11, who was really one of their key third down targets. Uh, and this shallow crosser was one of their key third down routes. So one of the things that we wanted to do was to drop a safety in from the boundary uh, with the anticipation that he'd have a chance to rob uh, the throw and maybe not even be seen by the quarterback. So what you'll see is as the formation starts, Curtis Oliver's running with the wide out. Again, we're in a man scheme here. Uh, and as the, uh, the, the play takes place, you'll see Raven Green dropping down right into the zone where we anticipated the throw. The quarterback threw it, and then Raven was there to, uh, to take the ball uh, and score uh, our first defensive touchdown of the season. So really nice job by the defensive guys, really nice job by Raven. Uh, and, uh, you know, really, really good play for us early in the game, gave us some early momentum. And uh, 
hopefully we'll have uh, a little bit better week for you guys coming up this week against uh, next week against Delaware. I uh, appreciate all your support down there in Williamsburg, and I uh, hope to see you guys soon. Thank you. Go Dukes. Thanks, Coach Cisa. I'm Brett Elliott, the co-offense coordinator, quarterback coach here at James Madison. And what I want to talk about today is a uh, little field option choice by our slot receiver, Rashard Davis, off of our play action. Um, so what we're trying to do here is we're anticipating William & Mary blitzing right here with the Sam. And I'm sitting up in the box just praying he blitzes, because if he blitzes, it gives us the look that uh, the exact look we want. And so basically what we're trying to sell is counter. That's one of our big run plays. We're trying to sell our counter run to the field, trying to suck the backers up and give uh, Rashard room to work one-on-one -on -one with the sky down safety. And uh, I thought this play was one of our more well-executed plays on the day here, uh, minus the snap. Good job by Brian man uh, managing the high snap. And then Rashard coming off, skip releasing, freezing the safety's feet, and then bursting out of it. Good protection, good throw, and then like always, what Rashard does with the ball is, is good things. We want to get him the ball as quick as we can with space to move. Uh, you can see it from the end zone a little better here, the play action. So we're going to pull a guard and, and insert a tight end like we're running counter this way. He's going to pull. Tight end is going to act like he's pulling all the way around like a running counter, but he's going to stop in the B gap and get a pl good play action fake with the backers and watch what it does to, to the Mike linebacker, number 50. You can see the suck that it has. It opens up the window here, especially with the blitz, uh, for Richard to work on a safety. And then number eight, uh, number six does the rest on his own. And that's, uh, that's one of the big plays from, from Saturday's game. Thanks again there. We had Coach Elliott and Coach Cecil. A little chalk talk here on the Coach Everett Withers Show. When we come back, well, you know what? The basketball season is soon to be here. We'll hear a little bit from Coach Matt Brady and Coach Kenny Brooks after this timeout on the Coach Everett Withers Show. Harrisonburg Nissan's factory authorized year-end clearance sale is going on now. Harrisonburg Nissan has all in stock 2015 Nissans priced at or below factory invoice. And you keep the rebates. 0% financing on Nissan Altima, Rogue, Sentra. All invoices clearly posted. Savings up to and over $8,000. We're clearing out the 15s to make room for the 16s. Now's the best time to buy. Harrisonburg Nissan's factory authorized year-end clearance sale. Going on now. Check us out 24-7. HarrisonburgNissan.com. Welcome to Valley Building Supply of Harrisonburg, formerly known as Valley Blocks. We've combined with the Valley Building Supply chain to offer a wider range of products and services to our customers. Visit our newly remodeled showroom to see the latest from Anderson. We also carry interior and exterior doors in a variety of styles and finishes and custom hardwood flooring and moldings. We are your Shenandoah Valley masonry experts. Our expanded inventory now includes more tools and builder's hardware than ever before. Let Valley Building Supply show you how to create the home of your dreams from foundation to finish. Products we buy right so you can do. That's right. At Office Products, we do things right. With our multi-million dollar inventory of new, used, and refurbished furniture, you're sure to find exactly what you're looking for. From desks to chairs, filing cabinets, and so much more. All the major brands that you're looking for. Office Products, we buy right so you can do. Office Products, we do things right. Clear to zip. Break a little. Good job. Good job. Game on. A gray but beautiful morning in Baltimore. This is CAA Media Day on CAA.tv and we are now joined by the head coach of the defending champs, the JMU Dukes, Kenny Brooks. And coach, you won 29 games last season, got to a second straight NCAA tournament. We will get to all of that. Unfortunately, the top storyline for your team isn't the best of news coming into this campaign. The reigning CAA Player of the Year, Precious Hall, out for the season due to injury. It really hurts to lose somebody so good on the floor, but also such a good kid. I think I think that's what people uh, misunderstand is that, yes, we have to replace her 20 points, but the hardest part is going to replace her leadership, her toughness, and uh, just her knowledge of our system. Uh, but, you know, Precious is doing wonderfully, uh, better than I could have ever imagined. Uh, she took the news uh, better than I did. You know, she cried for a couple minutes. 
I wiped her tears away uh, and said, okay, what do we need to do next? You know, I want to start my rehab. And uh, I was still crying, you know, but, you know, she handled the situation great. She's been in practice, helping out the younger kids, uh, being around, rehab's going wonderfully. And I'm very, very proud of the way she's handled the whole situation. Four championships in the past six seasons for your program. The expectation level is there. How has the team embraced that? Well, yeah, I think they embrace it because they don't want to let JMU Nation down. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's no, no pressure, you know, but they, they understand, you know, they signed up for this. They signed up to come to play for championships, and I think they're more than capable of doing it. And, and I'm excited about this team. We're, we're nowhere near what we're going to be uh, once the season's over with. We're still trying to invent ourselves. You know, we've had to scrap it and reinvent ourselves already a couple of times this year, uh, but they work hard. They work hard. They're very talented, and uh, I'm looking forward to what they can do this year. You can always tell when you've got a coach who's got five returning starters, his top three reserves coming back. There's a little more relaxed smile on the face of, of Matt Brady now in his eighth season in Harrisonburg. And it's got to be a good feeling. I know we've talked about it with a number of other coaches. It was a young CAA last year. Your team had no seniors, right? Yeah, no, no seniors. We started one junior, three sophomores, and a freshman. Uh, and we only have one other senior this year. So Ron Carey and Winston Gray are two lone seniors and providing all, all the leadership that we've asked them to do so far. You know, as a broadcaster, it's always interesting to find unique stories, and I don't think there's a more unique story, not only in the CAA, but maybe all of college basketball, than Yohani D'Alembert. Uh, for those who don't know, never had played basketball in his native Haiti, and then now a little more than five years ago, the tragic earthquake that happened. He's the half-brother of, uh, of uh, Samuel D'Alembert. He used to play for the Philadelphia 76 in the NBA, moved to Philadelphia, and that's really where he picked up basketball. And to watch his development from his freshman year to his sophomore year yeah. was truly staggering. Right, we took Yohani as, as a guy that we thought we could help get better as a basketball player, a little bit of a project, and he literally was in that earthquake in Haiti that killed over 200,000 people. And the, uh, three days after the earthquake, he was living with his brother in Philadelphia at the time, was with the Sixers, and uh, walks into the gym at Lower Mary, and now his new high school, and picks up a basketball for the first time and dunks it. And uh, for a long time, that's about all he could do. But he's remarkably evolved as a basketball player, and he's really invested in his own individual game. And he's a tremendous teammate. So we really feel like we, we've got a great basketball player for our for But James. what have you seen? I mean, how has he developed? It's unbelievable to think that you can go from literally not playing the game to being where he is right now. Where have you seen that development? You know, he really kind of struggled as a freshman. And, uh, you know, at the beginning of his sophomore year, I, I, we, we had some conversations. And what I, what, I, what I told him that he needed to focus on was not being a power player or not being a, you know, a, a finesse player. But really, he's got a Charles Barkley-like game in terms of he it's a combination of speed and power that makes him unique and, and very difficult to guard because most post players at any level are one or the other you're either tall and lanky or you're somewhat small and undersized and powerful what he is is six eight and really powerful but as much as anything he's really quick so that that makes him really hard to guard and we've yeah. stretched his game we're going to let him shoot some perimeter jump shots not a lot <laughs> Harrisonburg Nissan has all in stock 2015 Nissans priced at or below factory invoice. And you keep a rebate. 0% financing on Nissan Altima, Rogue, Sentra. All invoices clearly posted. Savings up to and over $8,000. We're clearing out the 15s to make room for the 16s. Now's the best time to buy. Harrisonburg Nissan's factory authorized year-end clearance sale. Going on now. Check us out 24-7. HarrisonburgNissan.com. Welcome to Valley Building Supply of Harrisonburg, formerly known as Valley Blocks. We've combined with the Valley Building Supply chain to offer a wider range of products and services to our customers. Visit our newly remodeled showroom to see the latest from Anderson. We also carry interior and exterior doors in a variety of styles and finishes and custom hardwood flooring and moldings. We are your Shenandoah Valley Masonry experts. Our expanded inventory now includes more tools and builder's hardware than ever before. Let Valley Building Supply show you how to create the home of your dreams from foundation to finish. Products, we buy right so you can do. That's right. At Office Products, we do things right. With our multi-million dollar inventory of new, used, and refurbished furniture, you're sure to find exactly what you're looking for. From desks to chairs, filing cabinets, and so much more. All the major brands that you're looking for. Office Products, we buy right so you can do. Office Products, we do things right. Clear to zip. Break a little. Good job. Good job. Game on.
Welcome back, everyone, to the Coach Everett Withers Show. The Dukes uh, played nine games thus far in the season. This Saturday, they'll enjoy a day off, although they certainly enjoy playing every Saturday as well. But, Coach, this is a little different routine this week in the sense that you do have the off week. So with that, what will the Dukes do here during the weekdays, and uh, how much time will they get a chance to just kind of get away from football for a little while? Well, uh, we came back in Sunday after the William and Mary game and kind of put that one to bed. Uh, Monday was, you know, our normal day off. We'll go back to practice. We go back to practice Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Practice really more, uh, trying to get ready for Delaware, uh, trying to get ready for our opponent, but also trying to get some practice in with some of our young guys and work on some things we need to work on. So we'll do that uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Give them our players off Friday, Saturday, and then they'll be back Sunday, and we'll start to work week on Sunday. This is kind of the the first practice week of spring practice, yeah. if you would, because a lot of the youngsters that we have not seen in games and because we have not seen them, right. they still wear their red shirt, so they keep a year yeah. of eligibility. You'll take a little further look at them this week, although you do coach them throughout sure. the course of the year. Well, one thing that we try to do is we try to take every opportunity to coach those guys through the season just so they're not behind for spring practice. We use Sundays a lot of times as other days to get those guys more practice, and we count those as kind of spring practice reps. This week with a bye week, we can do a little bit more of that and get those guys some opportunities to work uh, in, some, in some competitive situations and, uh, and try to hopefully make them uh, better players as we go through bye week. Much like homecoming, much like parents weekend or family weekend, the bye week, you don't have control over when right. that is. You don't simply get to say, hey guys, this is when I want to have it in a perfect situation. Right. This being so late in the season, you'd rather see it maybe a couple of weeks before now. Yeah, I would, you know, week seven, you know, six, seven, eight, maybe eight's a little late, uh, especially when you're dealing with, uh, at this level, 63 scholarship players. Uh, you start to lose guys as the season goes on, and then if the buys later in the, in, the, in the season, it really takes a toll on you. Okay. John Miller, what's his status? Well, John, right now, hopefully we have him back for uh, Delaware week. Uh, that's kind of the plan. He has one more doctor's appointment, but uh, I think he's going to be ready to go by the end of this week. Seven and two, uh, playoffs, of course, the postseason. And that is certainly the goal. But mm -hmm. uh, as you approach that goal, is it mm -hmm. still just one week yeah. facing Delaware next yeah. and then finishing up with Villanova? There's really no talk about playoffs at this time, I would think, around the team. No, our, our, this week we're talking about how we can get better. Uh, as a football team, as a whole, offense, defense, special teams. Uh, next week it'll be talking about a one-game season against Delaware, and then we'll move forward from there. Okay, so the Dukes, they travel to Delaware to take on the Blue Hens in Newark, and then, of course, the last home game of the regular season, November the 21st, and that's against the Villanova Wildcats. Because we do have a bye week next week, we will not have a Coach Everett Withers show. We're going to give you a little time off as well. You okay with that? I'm good with that. All right, very good. But So you can join us in two weeks when we return on the Coach Everett Withers show. Have a good week, everyone.